We hope you've had a great morning. I'm Shelley Helling, and I will be moderating this um, session, and this will be our final session for the morning. So we're looking forward to hearing from both um, Michelle Arnold and Travis Thurston as they, as they talk to us a little bit about um, some of this, the ETE um, 10 program. So let me introduce them and we'll get right on right on to business. This section this session goes from 12:30 to 105. So I'll give you a little notice at um, at about five minutes when it's time for the the meeting to end. Travis, I just left Travis's last session and he did a great job of integrating the Q and A that was posted on the chat into into his presentation. And so I, I'm guessing Travis that you'll follow that same pattern. If not, I'll monitor the chat and uh, take take notes of the uh, questions and then we'll include them in the, in the Q&A. So let me start with Michelle Arnold. Michelle is a PhD student in the Quinnick College of Natural Resources, where her research focuses on several aspects of liquid biofuel growth and development in the United States. While having experience teaching several lecture, capstone, broadcast, and lab classes, Michelle's primary role has been developing USU's foundational um, geography course online. This class uses active learning strategies, e-technology, and custom design tools to create an architecture of engagement to increase student success. Michelle is also the ETE coordinator of, um, in the Office of Empowering Teaching Excellence, which focuses on instructor development at the university. She also sits on the ETE Explore Subcommittee for graduate students, which focuses on how to best serve grad students and becoming better instructors before entering academia professionally. And Travis, um, Dr. Travis Thurston, is an assistant um, director of Empowering Teaching Excellence at Utah State University. Travis directs all instructional development programs and facilitates the ETE 10 Professional Learning Pathways micro-credentialing program to support instructors in evidence-based and reflective teaching practice. Travis is also a visiting professor for digital age teaching at Universidad Casa Grande in Ecuador. His research interests center on structuring and architecture of engagement for educational development through instructional development, instructional design, and instructional practice. With over a decade of experience as an educator in K-12 and higher education, Travis holds a Master of Educational Technology degree from Boise State University with a graduate certificate in online teaching and a PhD in curriculum and instruction from Utah State University. Travis and his wife, Jenny, have four children whose athletic and academic endeavors contribute to his perspectives on teaching and learning. And I think um, we will, be, we will um, be very benefited by being here um, today. So I'll turn the time over to you, Michelle and Travis, and let you um, continue forward. More time. Better, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much for that introduction. I, I appreciate that. Um, today, uh, Shelly and I are going to be talking a little bit about uh, ETE 10 program. And as we get started, I'm just curious if uh, those of you who are on, if you could just drop in the chat, if you have already been participating um, in ETE 10, what are, what's probably the top badge that you've earned, that you've, you've enjoyed engaging or implementing or contributing? Does that make sense? So in the chat, go ahead and drop in uh, a badge that you've already earned as part of ETE 10 uh, that, you've, that you've enjoyed. Tad says, presenting at the ETE conference. That's a great one, Tad, love that. Uh, Rachel, uh, the art museum. Yeah, that was a fun seminar, doing a slow looking at the art museum. Lauren, enjoy the library design. That's a great one. David hasn't earned a badge, but by the end of the day, ho hopefully David, you submit your, your reflection for the conference and you will earn your conference badge. Uh, Eliza, I've really enjoyed the assignment design workshop. Yep, I love that one in the library. That's a great one. Shell says, learning circle, digital power apps, learning circles. Good, great examples. Uh, Amy, publishing in the, the journal for ETE, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. 
So many of you have, have already been participating in ETE 10 and uh, engaging and participating. So we hope that today during the session, those of you who have been participating, uh, you can share some of your own insights uh, with those who are maybe new uh, to the program or are, are interested in getting started. So uh, I just wanted to kind of start uh, by talking about uh, what, why we do ETE 10. Um, one of the things we, we know from the literature and the research on faculty development and also on, on professional development to improve our own teaching is that one-off workshops or one-off events uh, like our conference today don't actually impact uh, a lot of change in our teaching unless it's paired with something more that's ongoing. Um, and so what we did a few years ago um, is as we, were, uh, as we were starting to implement more of, uh, of our conference and the ETE seminar series um, and our learning circles and these different elements, uh, and of course our city workshops, um, we, we really wanted to make sure that we were uh, being meaningful in the way we were having uh, faculty and instructors engage in what we were doing. And so to do that, uh, we came up with this idea of a, a digital badging pathway. And what that allows you to do is as you engage in these events, you can reflect on, on your takeaways and then intentionally plan on how you can implement those. And the, the badges themselves become a vehicle uh, for documenting those teaching improvement activities across time. So as you earn these badges, uh, we have some culminating certificates that we'll talk about, um, but it becomes this ongoing um, improvement process that we're continually making small efforts and small changes into our teaching to continually improve. Shelly, is your mic working? I think so. I think I have everything set. You guys hear me? Yes, Shelly, we can hear you. It's, it's the funniest thing that ends up being me and Travis is the people organizing the conference where things just don't work out the way they were supposed to. <laughs> um, well, as Shelly said, I'm Michelle Arnold, and I just got on with ETE last November. However, I've been doing ETE 10 program for years now. Sorry with me harassing Travis to let me into the eLearn X one year because it was all registered, all full, and I had to get in. <laughs> and I think that really showed Travis how dedicated I was to teaching. And that's really what the ET program is doing. The ET program is finding the instructors, or you guys are finding us, and really building this culture of teaching excellence here at Utah State. And what ET is, is a vehicle for us to do that through our seminars, through our learning circles, through our journal, we're here to improve student success. And by improving student success, what we need to do is improve our instructors. No one is saying that you come into your field and you know so much content and you know you've taught before or not. However, there's always room as a teacher to learn and grow and adapt. And we at ET want to give you the resources to do that. And we facilitate that through many of our activities, but we focus on your goals and what you want to get out of your instructor improvement through the ET10 program. Yeah, and what I love about that, Shelly, too, is that um, as we continue to, to meet you um, as, as faculty, as instructors, there are so many of you here that are really dedicated to, to helping our students succeed and that are doing amazing things in your teaching. And so the, the more that we can help share those stories and share those insights, the things that you're doing um, that are really beneficial for our students and improving learning, uh, we want to be here to, to help you do that. And, and my, fi my favorite part about all of this is the community that we build together, um, that we work together and, and that we have a, a common goal. So oh, what is ETE 10? Uh, as, we've, as we've highlighted um, and, and as our website is now being developed, we're thinking about this in, in three key terms, right? Engage, implement, and contribute. And when we talk about engage, um, that's participating in events like this and, and then reflecting on those experiences. 
to move into then actually implementing and trying those out in the classroom. And, and then again, there's this iterative process as we try things out in the classroom. Uh, we're always uh, kind of tinkering, working on how to improve it. Um, if I have a certain group of students that this strategy isn't working, how can I adapt it or change um, to fit that context? And then giving, giving a platform uh, like the ETE conference for so many of our instructors, we have over, over 50 presenters um, of faculty and staff and individuals who are teaching classes and, and sharing their insights and their expertise. And again, that, I, love, I love that aspect. Um, so when we talk about engage, um, this aligns with the idea of empowering you as a professional um, in mastery through teaching ex uh, expertise. When we say implement, we're talking about empowering you with the agency to make those decisions in your own classroom uh, where you exhibit your own teaching excellence. And then contribute is empowering you uh, with some accountability in the scholarship of teaching and learning. So not only are we learning and pulling from the scholarship in the literature to better understand, but we also want to be giving back to that. We want to contribute back to that. And as you earn these badges, the reason we have 10 in the title is because you earn 10 badges uh, that work toward a culminating certificate. And that first certificate is uh, called the Teaching Scholar Certificate. And once you've earned that badge, you earn 10 more to earn the Master Teacher Certificate. And when working on the Engage, Implement, Contribute, people think this is a straight line of things. When actuality as educators, we are always a little bit in each one. We're always going to new things, experiencing new things and reading books and listening to podcasts. And we're engaging in, in our content all the time. And we're changing things in our class, even if it's simple as the way a student contacts us or little blurb in our syllabus. We're always implementing new things to be more effective teachers and contributing. We have people who are facilitating today, who are moderating, who are presenting, and all of those are contributing to bettering our instructor development here at Utah State. So we can be in each one of those at a time. There's not levels associated with those different, with those different tiers there. Good, thank you, Shelley. Um, so one of the things that we've also uh, really intentionally done is built out uh, different tracks. Uh, our Explore Teaching track is, is the newest one right now. Uh, that one is specific to our graduate students. And we're still in the process of, of building out the content and building out that pathway. Um, but for several years we've, now, we've really been intentional about incorporating our graduate students um, into this program because so many of them are teaching classes uh, here at the university. And it's beneficial uh, for each of them as well uh, to, to be part of our community. Uh, the Foundations of College Teaching track uh, focuses primarily on, on some of those main principles. So individuals who haven't had a background in, in formal teaching, um, that's, that's a good place to start is with foundations and engaging in, in those activities. Uh, and I will add too, with each of these tracks, we have some required events and required elements that fit into those. Um, also, Evidence-based is where we really dive deep into the literature and the research on teaching and learning and how we can take some of those ideas uh, and turn them into a practical application uh, in our own classrooms. And then digital age teaching as well uh, is this idea of using uh, things like Dr. Villanueva talked about UDL or Universal Design for Learning, taking concepts like that, implementing them into our own approach uh, to our teaching and using uh, technology in an intentional way to engage our students. Uh, and then of course this fall, we're actually gonna be adding a fifth track uh, that is specific to in inclusive teaching. So we're really excited uh, about how this is a developing and how, again, we as a community uh, and our instructors are coming together to, to develop these opportunities. Shelly, do you want to talk specifically about um, the requirements for an example yeah, I do. So this is one of our examples that we have towards the Teaching Scholar Certificate. Overall, you need your 10 badges in. You need to earn six engage for the Teaching Scholar Certificate, three implement, and one contribute. 
However, when you pick a track and how we get to that track is you sitting down with me and Travis and we talking through your goals, there are going to be required badges associated with that. And they're not there to hinder your ability or not allow you to make choices for what badges you want to take. We have over 100 badges in the ETE 10 program to fit what you're looking for. But what we're trying to do is when you pick a track, we're trying to focus you down. Like I like to say when I meet with instructors, it's a difference between meeting with your advisor that first, that first semester and then meeting with them as a junior. Meet with them as a junior, it's gonna take you seven years to graduate. Whereas if you meet with us up front, we can get you to that certificate pretty simply. So the five required badges for the digital age track, it's not the same for all. There is a little bit of overlap. We have the planner teaching excellence pathway, which again is sitting down with me and Travis and not being out in the wind, figuring out what your goals are and how you're gonna accomplish them as an instructor. A learning circle, there's a learning circle designated for each of the tracks. Now you don't have to be in a specific track to go to that learning circle or sign up for that. Uh, we do focus on earning the earning their certificate on that on that learning circle though. The ETE conference, we're always encouraging people to come to the conference to engage with other instructors. We're doing that mighty networks today, but in person, that's really important aspect of what we do. The eLearn X implement. So again, this is taking a step up from engage and then the teaching philosophy because over at ETE, we believe that every instructor of our students at Utah State needs to have some sort of idea of what their teaching philosophy is and how it's adapting over time. Sweet. And this is what I was talking about. The first, the first certificate that we offer at the ETE 10 program is a teaching scholar certificate. At the bottom there, you can see that there's a six engage level, a step up is the three implement, and then the step up is the one contribute. Once you get that teaching scholar certificate, it changes a little bit. It's no longer that you're just going to events and saying, hey, that really impacted me. But now you're contributing back to the culture, either here or in your professional life in regards to teaching and how what you're doing, the effect that you're having on your students, the scholarship of teaching and learning that you're contributing to more than just responding to. Go ahead. Okay. And this is essentially the walkthrough that we do. So we meet with you, we plan your pathway. That's the first step that we do. We then start doc participating in events, and then we start documenting those through our ET10 Canvas course. Okay. I'm gonna talk about this because Travis made a blunder yesterday. <laughs> so the Plan Your Pathway, which is what I get to do on a regular basis, is make appointments with instructors to go over really what their goals are. Because in ETE, you guys are like our students. We don't want to just say, hey, go do this, because it's what we think you have to do. We sit down with you and say, hey, are you on a tenure track? Are you a lecturer? Do you want, how big is your classroom? Have you taught online before? What do you want to get out of this program? And then we sit and point you in the right direction. We tell you what badges are recommended. We tell you what resources are available to you. We tell you everything that you could all of those things that you wish someone told you when you stepped through the door that first day of teaching, we get you those resources that you need. This is a brand new thing. We started in November, but this is a required thing you have to do to earn the teaching scholar certificate. You can earn as many badges as you want, but if you don't do this, you will not earn the certificate. That's true. <laughs> So one of the things that we've been really intentionally doing as well is as we have events like the conference, we've been uh, recording sessions and then sharing those on our YouTube channel. And uh, one of the biggest reasons for that is that you can continue to earn badges uh, for participating in an event or engaging in an event, uh, even if you're not there live. So even if you go back and watch a recording uh, from a previous seminar or a previous conference, you can still earn those badges. Um, and, and we do that in part um, because there are so, there's so much great um, content and great insights that's being shared all the time that we don't, want to, uh, we don't want to just move on from that. We want that to continue to be part of our, our learning community and part of the things that we're doing. And we also want to give everyone the opportunity to engage because we know 
uh, even just with teaching schedules, not everyone can attend every event. And especially now uh, with you know, being at home and being on quarantine and all these sorts of things, um, taking care of childcare, uh, we, we can't always be to every event. So uh, we've been really intentional in recording those and sharing those out with the community. So you can continue, even if you can't be there live, you can continue to engage. So Shelly, shall we jump over to the course and kind of show an example? Do you have it open? Yeah, let me switch my window real fast. Okay. I do want to say real quick, as I'm looking at the feed, it says, can graduate students participate in ETE 10? Of course, they've always been able to participate in ET10, but recently we've gone out of our way to make sure that they feel included. We've included the Explorer graduate student track along with their certificate, which is only for graduate students. However, graduate students can earn the other two certificates if they'd like, along with attending any event they like. And I want to make that really clear. Any of the events that ETE holds are open for staff, faculty, lecturers, adjunct, tenure professors, associate professors, graduate students, anyone who is teaching our students here at Utah State in some way is open to anyone. Perfect, thanks, Shelly. Shelly and Travis, just to let you know, we have 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, Shelly. Um, if you wanna go ahead and click along with us, uh, you, can, you can do so, but I wanna show you how you can access this. If you go under the Implement tab at the top of our, our homepage, and you go to ETE 10 Pathways, uh, there's a link there, either here on the right-hand side or this blue button as well, to join the course. And so if you haven't already enrolled, uh, you'll kind of see this screen uh, to enroll in the course, and it shows uh, just a little button over on the right-hand side to enroll in the course. Once you're already in, uh, this is what that course looks like. And we have this uh, ETE 10 Pathways page at the start. And this kind of run through, runs through a lot of the information that we've been talking about today, uh, talking about how to, how to earn those badges, um, and then also each of these different tracks and the different requirements. So all of those are listed in, in here. Specifically though, I want to give you the example uh, of our conference badge. Uh, and I want to also encourage each of you uh, to submit this today. So you'll go down here into the Canvas course and you click ETE conference first. If this is the, the first badge that you're earning for the conference, you can actually earn up to three of those badges. There's ETE conference first, second, and third. Um, so you'll click on ETE conference. And then this shows you the criteria. So attending the conference, which you're doing right now, and then submitting a reflection. So depending on which track you're on, if, if you haven't selected a track yet, you can submit your reflection based on that individualized track. Or if you're already enrolled in a track like Digital Age, we have some suggested prompts to help you um, get started with your reflection. And then Shelly has added uh, some submission samples at the bottom to give you an idea of, of what that might look like as well. And then you just submit that uh, as an assignment like you would, you know, like our students would submit an assignment in Canvas. And, and then I want to show you real fast too how you can track, uh, how you can track your badges. So I need to go in here as a student though because it will look a little bit different. Also, we have a question that says, and I think it's kind of important. Can we say something about how people who are working toward the prior to implementation of the tracks can get their past participation work toward getting their certificate? Because they feel like they're starting over, right? So we have this thing for people who have been doing that. And it's called the individualized track where there's only two required badges. One is the plan your pathway. Again, we think that's incredibly important, especially if you're going on to the master teaching certificate, we wanna hook you up with how you can contribute, how you can work on the journal, how you can do peer review of other courses. And the second is the teaching philosophy, because by the time you're almost ready to be done with that teaching scholar certificate, the teaching philosophy should be about ready, okay? So those are the only two required badges when you're that far along already in the program. 
So as you, as you start earning your badges, you can click on that badges tab on the left hand side here. And it will actually load all of the all of the course badges that are available, but it will show you specifically the badges that you have earned. And it's it's thinking really hard right now, probably because we're doing a live demo. It's, that's always what happens. It's just spinning right now, but it will actually light up and show you uh, which badges you've earned in here. The other way, and, and actually kind of my my preferred way of tracking progress uh, towards a certificate is by clicking on the Pathways tab itself. Uh, once you click on the Pathways tab, this kind of gives you a, a visual of what this pathway looks like. So depending on which track you're on, um, there will be different requirements. So if you choose, let me minimize this. If you choose the Foundations track, for example, over on the right-hand side, it will show you if they're, if they're grayed out here, that means you haven't earned them. And if they show up uh, with the blue, that means that you have earned them. Um, it also gives you an indicator on the number here. So one out of five means I've earned one out of the five required of those badges. And then moving into each of the levels, the scholar, uh, the scholar engage level, I need to earn six of those. And it's telling me that I've already earned seven. And then over on the right hand side, it will show me which of those uh, badges I've earned. And so this pro provides a really uh, simple way uh, for you to kind of track your progress along the way. And as this lights up here, 100% complete, that shows me that I've finished my teaching scholar certificate already. That shows me I've finished all, all of those requirements, the six engage, the three implement, and the one contribute. Uh, so Rachel's asking, do you know if getting these badges is considered evidence of teaching excellence for the teaching portion of a tenure track role statement? It's a great question, Rachel. Uh, we are seeing more and more uh, of these badges uh, showing up in, the, in that documentation of your, of your teaching improvement activities. And so we, we certainly would encourage you to utilize these badges uh, in a way that helps you to document that process. One thing I really like about uh, the badges for that purpose is that you can you can see kind of across time how you've been working uh, either engaging or implementing or contributing back to this community uh, it's a it's a really for me it's a really nice way to show uh, how much effort and how much time you're putting into that, that teaching improvement let's see other questions Oh yeah, if you have questions about this, if you're running into barriers, please reach out to me. I'm happy to walk you through it and, and make sure that you, you can find your way submitting the badges and, and getting uh, and making progress so that it's not, not taking up your time. Or me. Uh, <laughs> or Michelle, of course. Please feel free to, to email Shelly. She's at michelle.arnold at usu.edu. Yep. Do you want to drop your email in the chat there? Shelley? Multiple times already. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we have a question about awarding badges retroactively. Yeah, I was going to hit that one. Thank you. Um, we, we can award those badges retroactively for, for activities or events that you participated in. Um, back to, we've actually done it back to 2014, which is when we first started offering ETE uh, events. So if you've been, if you have already been engaging but not submitting your badges, yes, you can go back and retroactively submit for, for past events that you've participated in. So, so Travis, it looks like, um, it, it looks like um, another question Eliza said, is there some documentation that she could find? Um, and and yes to yes the session is being recorded kim um, yeah, the, the best way i would say eliza is is here in the canvas course we're still working on building out the website right now we just moved to a new website uh, but if you go here in the canvas course especially at this et10 pathways button the top one that really breaks down uh all of this information that we're talking about today we've also recorded a video um, on there that talks a little bit more about the pathways. Um, but then you can see um, how each of those tracks is kind of broken down for the required elements 
Um, and then we, we also include some recommended ones there. And, and really what that comes down to, I would say, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Shelly, one of the biggest things that we want to do and why we started doing the plan your pathway um, kind of consultation was to make sure that we were aligning the things that you're participating in with your own personal goals, your own professional goals for your teaching improvement. So we, we want to find something that's going to be beneficial for you and aligns with your own goals. Uh, so if, if that's a track, if that's one of our, our defined tracks, perfect. That's, that's easy. We can work with that. You, you do the required elements and you pick some other basically elective uh, events or activities uh, to get to your 10. If, um, if this doesn't align with your goals, if you, or even if you've already been doing ETE 10, you can do the individualized track where you earn 10 of those badges. Um, again, aligned with your own, your own professional uh, goals. Does that answer your question, Eliza? Um, Travis and Michelle and Shelly, I'm sorry, I'm just reading you, Michelle, it's absolutely calling Shelly. Um, so thank you. This is, there's an enormous amount of information here and this is a great program to be involved in. And so I'm sure that they, and there's a lot of people that want to reach out and have a, uh, have a lot of questions. We are at the end of our time. And so just to remind you that in the Mighty Networks app, you can do some networking and ask questions there. And of course, contact both Shelly and Travis via their emails and, and they'll answer. I'm sure I'm speaking for you now, but I'm sure they'll answer all of the questions that you Absolutely. have. Absolutely. 